New episode of Learning Photography on YouTube. Today we'll talk about shutter speed, my favorite. And we will see how exposure lens can become a very creative element in our photography. Welcome to my channel and welcome to episode 4 of Learning Photography on YouTube. If you are here for the first time and you don't want to miss the next episodes of this photography course, it might be a good idea to subscribe. Before diving into the shutter speed topic, let's have a look to my favorite images from last week's assignment. Of course, thanks to everyone for submitting your photos this week. I really hope you found the assignment useful. Of course, we will have an assignment also for the shutter speed at the end of this video. You will know. If you saw the exposure episode a couple of weeks ago, you know already that shutter speed, aperture and ISO help us to control exposure in our photography. But since today we want to talk a little more in depth about shutter speed, let's first understand more about the shutter. So how does the shutter work? The shutter is a curtain that covers the image sensor in our cameras and it remains closed until the camera fires. When you press the shutter button, the shutter curtain opens and it exposes the sensor to light. The light that passes through the lens to the camera sensor creates your photos. So what is the shutter speed? The shutter speed is the amount of time that the shutter is open. It is basically like a timer for light coming into the camera. In fact, the shutter speed is the length of time that the shutter curtain is open and the sensor is exposed to light. So shutter speed is measured in time increments from full seconds, minutes or hours to a fraction of a second. The faster is the shutter speed, the faster our shutter will open and close, exposing less light to the camera sensor. While when you use a lower shutter speed, the shutter is open longer and it exposes more light to the image sensor. Each camera has a range of preset shutter speeds available. Common shutter speeds are 1 over 30, 1 over 60, 1 over 125 and shutter speeds usually doubles with each increments, letting half of the light in. Just like when you change f-stop in your aperture. Do you remember? Shutter speed is very important when it comes to movement. And there are two main categories of movements that we need to take in consideration. The movement of the photographer and the movement of the subject. Let's talk about the photographer first. When we hold the camera in our hands without using a tripod, we need to use a shutter speed that is fast enough to avoid any camera shake. As a matter of fact, it is impossible for most people to hold a camera perfectly still. So a rule of thumb to make sure that our images will not have that horrible micro shake look is to use a shutter speed faster than the focal length of the lens that we are using. Let me explain. It sounds difficult, but it is not. If you're using a 50 millimeter lens, like in this case, don't use a shutter speed that is slower than one over 50. So you will need to use 1 over 100, 1 over 125 and so forth. If you're using a 200 millimeter lens, don't use a shutter speed that is slower than 1 over 200. So you will need to go to 1 over 250, 1 over 300, 1 over 400. Nowadays we have cameras with 
in-body image stabilization systems or lenses with vibration reduction that can allow to gain a few stops and use slightly slower shutter speeds. But if you stick to the focal lens speed rule, you will be okay, no matter what camera or lens you are using. Now, let's talk about the movement of the subject, which in my opinion is a little more interesting. And shutter speed is key if my goal is to freeze the movement of my subject or the motion of any element in my photo. As we said before, not only photographers cannot hold a camera still, but actually human beings in general cannot stay completely still for a very long time. So if we don't want to see any motion blur in our images, we will need to make sure to use a shutter speed that is fast enough to freeze our subject. But shutter speed can also be used to capture motion, becoming an artistic tool for the photographer. Sometimes it can be a very subtle motion that happens in a few seconds or less. Sometimes it can be a much longer motion, which is what happens in minutes. As some of you might know already, or as you just saw, I love the ethereal look of long exposure photography, which is obtained using very slow shutter speeds. You will find videos about this subject on my channel, but let me know in the comments below if you are interested in this topic, as I am thinking to create a long exposure mini-series course at the end of this photography course. All right. It is time for homeworks now. Let's talk about this week's assignment. It is very simple. This is what I would like you to try to do. Set your camera in shutter priority, which means that you will be able to control your shutter speed and the camera will automatically adjust the aperture in order to have a balanced exposure. Find two compositions. One where you will freeze the movement in your scene using a fast shutter speed and one where instead you will capture motion using a slower shutter speed. Of course, in the next video, I will show the most compelling images. So post your images on Instagram, tag me, Atelier Rufo Photography, and this time use the hashtag LPOY underscore shutter speed. And we are done for today. The fourth episode of Learning Photography on YouTube is over. In the next video, we will talk about ISO. As usual, I hope that you learned something new today. And if you did, hit the like button now. I appreciate your help. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.